Okay, so proof by exhaustion is the second type of proof that we're going to look at here. And proof by exhaustion tends to be the more common one that's asked in exams from the ones that I have been looking at. Now, when you think of the word exhaustion or exhausted, we tend to think about it meaning tired. But actually what exhausted means is it means you've tried all of the different things. You may hear people say a phrase like they had exhausted all of their options. It means that they have tried and gone through all of the possible options that there are. And so it's gonna be the same thing that we have for proof. It says this means breaking down the statement into all possible smaller cases where we prove each individual case. And this technique is sometimes known as case analysis. So the best way to do this is to try and have a look at a particular question. So it has, says here to prove that n squared plus n is even for all integers n. And we need to think how we can break down all integers n. Well, first of all, if you ever see something written like this and it says n is a member of z, this actually means that n is an integer. The z bit stands for integers and it comes from a German word, which means like whole, I think. So that's what this language might look like, that n is an integer. And we're gonna think about what it means, integers, how we can break them down into two different cases. Well, the two cases that we're gonna try and break these down into are going to be even numbers and odd numbers. Because all integers are either an even number or an odd number, including zero, which would fall into the even numbers category here. Now, the reason that we need to break this one down is because it doesn't really seem like there's any kind of algebraic manipulation that we can do here to show that it is even for all integers. So I'm going to try probably two different methods of this, and then I think I'll tell you which one I think works best overall. So we're going to break down um, into even and odd. So first of all, let's consider the even integers. So let n equal 2k, which is where k is an integer. Then we can say that n squared plus n would be 2k squared plus 2k, which is 4k squared, which plus 2k. Take out that factor of 2 to show that it's a multiple of 2. Hence, n squared plus n is even when n is even. Now I'm going to consider the odd integers. This time, I'm going to let n equal 2k plus 1. It's just our school bell going off, where k is an integer. There's a lot of writing to do for these. Then, n squared plus n would be equal to 2k plus 1 squared plus 2k plus 1. So that's going to be 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 plus 2k plus 1 which is 4k squared plus 6k plus 2. You can then take out that factor of 2 to get 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. And obviously, this thing that we've got written here is an even number because you've got some number being multiplied by 2, which is going to give you an even. Hence, n squared plus n is even when n is odd. So, n squared plus n is therefore even for all integers n. So we broke it down into those two different cases that we had there for this. Okay, we did it in the evens and the odds. It would work for both of them. Therefore, it works for all of them. Now, I'm just going to do a little proof um, in the top corner that could be a different way of doing this. We could say that n squared plus n, and this isn't really going to be a proof by exhaustion. This is a slightly different one. We could factorize this and you could have n, n plus 1. And this is the product of two consecutive numbers or two consecutive integers. And if they're two consecutive integers, they are either odd times even, which is even, or even times odd, which is even. 
And so that's also a proof by exhaustion because you've considered if it's odd times even or even times odd, that they both give you even. And they let you do things like this in the mark scheme as well. Similarly, you could have done these proofs down here in a different way. You could have said, um, if I just do this one in a slightly different colour before it gets too busy, if we consider the even integers, we could just say that if n is even, n squared is even, because we know that an even number times an even number is even, so n squared plus n is even, as even plus even is equal to an even number. And you can do the same thing for odd. You could say if n is odd, then n squared is odd, and an odd number plus an odd number is an even number. So that's kind of like a logic or reasoning way that you could do this question. You've got three different options. You've got the algebraic option, which is in blue. You've got an alternative option that doesn't always work, but we saw a nice little trick for that one in green. And then in the red version, I've only done half of that proof, which I call kind of like the logical way of doing this, where you're breaking it down in just terms of your knowledge of odd and even numbers. Numbers, and all three of those would be fully accepted in the exam. But I think my students tend to prefer the blue one. So we're going to have a look at this other question that we've got here. This time it says prove for all n being a member of the natural numbers. So it says here that n is a member of the natural numbers. These are the natural numbers. And the natural numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Really what the natural numbers are is they are the positive integers. Now I'm going to just put a bit of a question mark by the zero because sometimes mathematicians include zero, sometimes they don't include zero, but it doesn't really matter. They're just asking us to prove this for the positive integers. So we're going to do the same thing. This time it says that we want to prove that n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4. So first of all we are going to consider if n is even, let n equal 2k, where k is an integer. Like I said, you don't need to say that k is an integer, but it's good formal notation. Then n squared plus 2 would be 2k squared plus 2, which is 4k squared plus 2. And we can say here, this is a multiple of 4, and this makes it 2 more than a multiple of 4. Hence, if it's 2 more than a multiple of 4, it can't be divisible. Hence, n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4. And then I'm going to consider if n is odd. So I'm going to let n equal 2k plus 1, where again, k is an integer. Then n squared plus 2 would be equal to 2k plus 1 squared plus 2, which is 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 plus 2. Whoops. So that's going to be two lots of 2k squared plus 2k, and then left over at the end for this bit that won't factorise, we're going to have a plus 3. So again, we could say that this is an even number, and you're adding on here an odd number. So n squared plus 2. Oh, I didn't need to take out a factor of 2. In fact, what I should have done here is I should have taken out a factor of 4. So we're going to do it as 4k squared plus k. So this bit is a multiple of 4. And this bit is 3 more than a multiple of 4. So n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4, because it's always 3 more than a multiple of 4. Hence, n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4 for n as a member of the natural numbers. In fact, we've even proven that it's not divisible by 4 for 
all integers because we just assumed that it didn't say that it was positive we just said it works for all integers but if it works for all integers it's going to work for the natural numbers because the natural numbers are a smaller subset of the integers because obviously the integers includes the negative ones as well okay so proof by exhaustion usually the best technique is going to be to split it into odd numbers and even numbers sometimes though they might ask you to prove for particular values they might say for values of n between 11 and 20 in which case you could just substitute in the values between 11 and 20 and show that whatever it is they're asking you to show is true okay just one more bit on disproof by counter example now